talk slow. The music, music you're listening to is um, all done by proteins. Okay, so this is uh, the first slide. This is the stretch of amino acids in a string before they are folded and uh, proteins fold. So this is all about protein folding from an electronic music composer and how I got into uh, protein sounds is a story. So I'd like to tell the little story quickly about proteins. And uh, I'm not used to these little things. So the first story is in 2014, I heard about an Indian man by the name of Anuban Bandiyopadhyaye, who is a researcher at the Japan Institute of Natural Sciences. And uh, he was uh, researching uh, the nanobrain, which means he was searching uh, the sound of microtubules inside of the brain. And um, he delivered it in England, and I read about it. I wrote to him and asked him about it. He has a website, Beautiful Humans, and um, this is a little uh, synopsis of what he did. Uh, these are a lot of technical terms, but this is uh, over on there. I guess I'll have to move it. I, that's the only thing I have to do is I have to come over here and touch things like this. Is it moving now? No. So, yeah, now it is. So that's a microtubule in the proteins. This is a, like a, they stick out of the cell and the proteins march along that thing and the little microtubules, they send a little electric signals and change the shape of the protein that actually makes us. So uh, the microtubules, they have their, in sequence, you see the blue shaping there. And this is a, the, a nano tunneling microscope and I'm gonna show you um, the uh, movement of the proteins and the sounds that they make. I hope that works. And I hope this works. And do we get a playing video? Is it all playing? Yeah, there they are. So the sounds uh, uh, that you hear are in the megahertz, gigahertz, terahertz range. You can't hear them, but uh, through uh, wave mechanics, quantum wave mechanics, they were able to uh, build up so you could hear it in the ear. And uh, the idea here is that we took the sounds, so that I did the sound for a year, I worked with them for a year to get, understand how the, uh, the sounds of the microtubules in the brain actually, uh, you can hear them. So that's a lot of work. Uh, Stuart Hameroff and Roger Penrose from England have also been doing a lot of that. The next researcher is from uh, France. His name is uh, uh, Joel Sternheimer. And uh, the epigenetic uh, conversation that we just had, uh, he deals with the uh, scaling waves in the universe. And these um, waves affect the little molecules uh, inside of the brain and they also in turn affect the folding of the protein. So actually we're, we are built uh, by these uh, scaling waves from the universe. So we are in fact uh, built uh, by these uh, uh, epigenetic waves. He worked very closely with Louis de Broglie, who was a quantum uh, physicist. So together I'm gonna play uh, the sounds that he makes uh, with his proteins. He uh, heals people, and France has all of his sounds on speakers in all the zucchini fields and spinach fields in France because it cures all of the diseased proteins within the actual plants themselves. Uh, if you play the right sound of the protein, it'll heal your body. And I'm, you'll find some interesting things I'm going to say to you as a result of this quick piece of knowledge, but you can study him. I've given you a nice uh, URL on that. Pretty, isn't it? The uh, next uh, researcher is um, Marcus Bueller from MIT. I work very closely with Marcus. He also works with, um, what's his name? Tomas Saracino. You may have heard of him. So 
the spider webs. This is uh, Zhao's work where he is mapping all of the mathematics of the quantum wave mechanics so that you can hear the uh, inside of the spider web there are the proteins and they are analyzing uh, these uh, proteins so they can build better metallic structures for architectural purposes. So this is what this sounds like. So they all sound a little different. So there's another way of listening to proteins. So this is a protein of, of the format of the data file. Anyway, it's kind of complicated, but that is the sound of the uh, spider web. <coughs> This is the analogy between the shape of the protein structure and the music structure. So they do an analogy between you know, how you organize your protein and how you organize the music. That started to interest me. About four years ago, I wrote to them and I said, do you have any sounds associated with that? They didn't then, but they do now, and that's coming up. So this is a very nice website you can go to, uh, Bio Nanoscience, and you can uh, learn about the uh, structure of the protein and how it's related to music. Okay, let me get to another one. This is uh, a recent invention uh, that they have created. It's an Android app. You can get it. It's an amino acid synthesizer. And uh, this amino acid synthesizer, these 20 amino acids, you can actually um, play them. So let's have a look. We, we play the sounds of that, and then we uh, play, uh, here's my fingers. So I'm picking an amino acid, and you hear a sound. So they've been able to map uh, all of the, uh, the genetics of the amino acids, and they get markers for them uh, for every protein, and then they can create uh, a sound with it. So you can actually create the sound of the amino acids. These amino acids, this is their very distinct sound signature. So it's not a made up sound. These sounds are really the amino acid sounds. So you can actually create uh, sounds with the amino acids. Um, this is their latest invention, which is a protein synthesizer. It's a complicated. Uh, it has 100,000 uh, sounds of proteins. Every protein is in the synthesizer. And, uh, I'd like to show you the folding and the sound of that. Here is the sound of what they have done. Uh, this is uh, the folding of the, uh, the amino, the, the protein itself. Oh, we, oh, we got, where's that? No, it doesn't change. Let me get that for you. There's the, uh, that's the, those are the string of the amino acids, and when they, when they're affected uh, by a sound, they turn, and they fold, they call folding, and uh, you can use this um, protein synthesizer and create any protein that you want. So let me go here. That's very unusual, I think, and this is, uh, see these little, the, the, the protein is always moving on the uh, microtubule, and as it's walking and moving, um, it, when it moves, it, it makes a wave. And when it makes a wave, they can use the quantum wave mechanics from Schrodinger and de Broglie and actually create a mathematical formula with a Fourier transfer and bring it up to the audible level of the human ear. And this is the graphical representation of the synthesizer itself. So the, all the parts, and these little dials here uh, that you see, this is the Max plugin. It's a Max plugin that goes into an Ableton 10 Live uh, DAW, a digital audio workstation. So then, <coughs> these are the, uh, the little dials, and if I hit the sound, these sounds here, for, this is, a, they're folding. So it's kind of hard to show you that, but this is what it sounds like uh, when you do that. Uh, so as it's folding, you have maybe 11. So the protein can fold in maybe 11 different ways. The amino acids will fold maybe two or three or four ways, up to 11 ways. And you can actually, I, you, you get it, you can do it, I do it. I, this is what I was so excited. They finally gave me uh, the synthesizer to use. I, uh, premiered it in Denmark uh, last week, 
and it was really went over quite well. And um, it, it goes inside of you. The, the thing I want to say right now is that you, you hear the pro for the first time in human history, a human can hear the sound that's going on in its own body. So keep, it, keep, keep, keep that in mind just for a second. Okay, I want to bring in this very quickly. Uh, Gregory, Gregorio Morales is a quantum aesthetics person. And we're going to talk about the artist John Dunn, myself, and uh, Gregorio. But he has terminology that is used by quantum physicists. So uh, my interest in this is that uh, listening to your mind work to try to understand non-locality, try to understand uh, any of implicate order or entanglement. These are quantum, these are terms that sort of describe what quantum physics is all about. So when you say non-locality, uh, you, you have to understand what that means. So consideration of matter and consciousness is two varieties of a common magma. Anyway, it's quite exciting. And his book is The World of Quantum Culture. So if you get a hold of that book, The World of Quantum Culture, uh, you'll see literature, poetry, art, sculpture, all of the arts, uh, how they are translated in a quantum uh, field, quantum mechanical interpretation. And again, this is just a quick diagram to uh, show you the, um, the string of the amino, the amino acids and how the long range electromagnetic frequencies create the shape of the protein. I mean, if you think about that for a minute, I think it's quite profound. In other words, every protein has a specific shape. Every shape is specific to a certain function of the body. Every shape is dictated by these electromagnetic waves that come from space, and they affect the molecules. And the molecules change and make the protein. So we're really living uh, creatures from star fields, star, star energy uh, in the whole universe. I mean, we're, we're in constant vibration uh, with the universe. So there they are, Hans and Dirk. I've been working with them for many years. So here we go. The most important thing to bring into this is here's the amino acids uh, in a string. And then over here, they're different colored for the different types of amino acids. And then here they are all folded. There may be 10, 10 folds in this. And each one of those folds has a frequency. So this might be 11 frequencies all together. So I have, and its protein structure can in principle be modified by quantum entanglement as a long distant aspect. I just think that's quite fascinating. And John Dunn, uh, he has a thing called algorithmic art. What he does is he assigns a pitch. Maybe he'll assign pitch to a protein. Maybe he'll assign an instrument to a protein. Uh, so he assigns different uh, types of um, creative decisions. He's not into the quantum mechanics of it all. Um, he is assigning different, is a lysamine uh, protein. And Rhythmic, rhythmic and kind of musical. My own setup is um, having a range of synthesizers. You can see my, my protein synthesizer, amino acid synthesizer is over there. And the question is, what happens to us when we listen to the sounds of proteins? I'd love to talk to you about that. But anyway, this is the subjective uh, uh, quantum consciousness level where you integrate the meanings of all of these worlds, intentionality, phenomenality, you, they all are terminology that gives you a conceptual understanding. And then you work, uh, I work with the synthesizers. <clears throat> How I do that, um, say for instance, let me see, on the right, you have a folding pattern. So we show a folding pattern. And on the left, we have a, yeah, so, what I'm doing is I'm using a wavetable synthesizer, and I'm trying to match the folding shape. So then after I match the folding shape, I make a sound. So I, I'm using the shape. So some 
add instrumentation to it, but I'm using the shape. So that's one way of integrating how I've integrated the protein with my, my normal synthesizers. The other way is using uh, the frequency uh, that the, uh, the proteins make. And um, if you, sh you see the, you see the uh, they are going up and down. Yeah, there they are. They are the frequencies. And if you get a frequency table, you can match match the frequencies as well. So it's getting creating wave shapes on a Waldorf nave synthesizer to a protein synthesizer. Okay. So then uh, this is a little bit uh, combining sonified elements that are in the universe itself. So since, since I said there were scaling waves in the universe that affect the proteins themselves. So here we have how I integrate quasars, pulsars, comets, and uh, integrate them all with a synthesizer. And it sounds something like this. So that's your, that's your sound of including all of the sonified sounds that we get from outer space. And then you match them uh, with the oscillators. So I try to match the sound of the, those sounds with the synthesizer sound. So you integrate your, your, yourself with the sounds of the universe, basically. I also do this creating a neuroacoustic neuro architecture, uh, which you pick um, th three or four um, ways of going about making a sound. So you could pick uh, one of your acids, you can pick one of the 44 phonemes in a, in, a, in a geometrical format. And you can also pick a scale, a microtonal scale. And then you can play them all together. And you use this as a, as a sort of an experiment to understand how different sounds go together that normally uh, you wouldn't have any idea about. So you just... You're just kind of listening a little bit. <laughs> it's, an, it's an experiment in, in trying to understand sound, basically. So you have to <clears throat> listen to sound very closely and very deeply, and other sounds come to mind. It's not normal that you would do that, but if you do do it, you'll find yourself in a very different world. <clears throat> this is a... Uh, looking at my time, good. This is uh, creating... I create uh, space music. And um, I have an idea of how to do a uh, composition. So I, I, I use uh, my thought, and I, I use my instrument. The instrument is very important, because the man-machine interface is a very important ingredient for what you select as an instrument. I use the sounds from space, and then I use the tone, the kind of tone I want, uh, using, using the protein sounds. And then I call it xenolinguistics because uh, NASA has also knows that there's a lot of sounds that come in that are being sonified, that are a part of language, that are a part of thought, and the same kind of waves are in space. So the origination of the construction of a life form, sentient form, I mean, we call ourselves sentient, we, we do a lot with what we have, um, but what is in store for us as we learn more about ourselves when we make the sound? So I'm going to play uh, those things together to give you an idea of what that sounds like when you pick a thought. I picked a beetle, thought about a beetle, and then I picked uh, this synthesizer. And uh, then I thought I'd pick uh, something from space. And then I thought I'd pick uh, a phoneme. <laughs> So I got t that's a T I or S H or C H or O L O L O. So you you find the the beginning sounds of words. P T P T P T P T P T P T P T. You know, ba 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 ma 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 ti 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 a thought. So you put a thought in there. Uh, you put a non-locale thought. You think, well, I'm going to think far away, beep, 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 beep. And maybe the beep, 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 beep. And this sound, protein sound, go together for what? Why would, you do, why would I want to do it? I do it to see if I can get a new idea. That's basically why I do it. 
and let's play the combined sounds now. I'll knock out the sounds from the individuals. That's supposed to stop. <laughs> well, there they are, all working together somehow. So this is this is how you, as a painter, and you take different color paints, or a writer, a poet. Which what I'm all I'm doing is I'm mixing a lot of different sounds to create a sonic a sonic space. I, I call it a neurolinguistic architecture. I try to create an architecture in my mind that is made of sound and thought at the same time. So I think that's quite interesting, and I write a lot as well. So I got a lot of interesting ideas about this. So I, I think um, we live in the xenosphere, and uh, I do, we do live in a xenosphere. We're a little planet, but we're lots of space around us, and I believe we're at this threshold of discovering who we are as human beings because we've never had this science ever before. And we're integrating uh, new science into our minds. And as it's in our minds, we are afforded the opportunity to think about things we've never thought of before, because we're exposed to it. It's going inside of us. So if we objectify it and keep it outside and say, oh, that's a scalar wave, or that's a scaling wave, it's, it's, it's a, if we turn it around and we do it in engineering, like Sadhguru, <laughs> You know, Sadhguru. So Sadhguru says, inner, inner engineering. Well, it's true. Uh, I believe that the sounds are really affecting us as a culture, as a global species. And I know we have a lot of problems, but... <laughs> but I think um, for those of us that can weasel out of the terrible situation we see, but it may be our own, may be our own making. I think we have to really be who we are. Is, is, is future beings. Uh, that's kind of it.